Welcome to the Ogles channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, we are here to talk about Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. <laughs> I did play the game. I know what it's called. <laughs> but Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Shield, I know I'm a little bit behind on the review. But I wanted to actually play through the whole game. I wanted to, of course, you know, catch all the legendaries, beat all the gems, and I want to give a full breakdown and a full final thoughts on what I think of the game. Now, I'll admit, I am not a dedicated Pokemon fan throughout all the years. I did get into the game all the way back in Generation 1, and I loved this game thoroughly. I bought Pokemon Blue at Target back when I was in 7th grade, and I played on, the, of course, the original Game Boy. Not the Game Boy Advance, not the Game Boy Color, not even the Game Boy Pocket. All the way back to the original. Hang on, I got it over here somewhere. Um, let's see. The original Game Boy. Now, my gosh, it's like a brick, of course, now, and then the, the green screen, of course. But back then, I loved the game so much. I played through this multiple times on, of course, the original Game Boy. And when Generation 2 came out, it didn't even come out yet, actually. I found the Japanese version of Generation 2 and beat the entire Pokemon Silver on, in Japanese before it even came out. And that's a, that's a different story for an entire different video. But after Generation 2, I sort of fell off the bandwagon. I didn't, I didn't play Generation 3 at all. And there were tons of Pokemon games that came out after that. Of course, there was, you know, like we, like I said, Generation 3, the Ruby, Sapphire, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Emerald, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, Heart Silver, Black White, Black White 2, Ogre. There were so many, I'm not even going to say them all, but I've just played them all here. Now, I'll admit, after all these I missed out on, I did try to get back in for X and Y. But when I bought X and Y, that was the exact same time me and my wife, we got engaged. And of course, marital plans got in the way, and I only got through like maybe two gems on X and Y. And so I could barely even say that I played those. And so it seemed like a natural progression here. Going from generation one all the way to whichever, whatever generation you want to call this game. Start to finish. How does the new game holding up the series from what I remember in generation one? And today we're going to break down a full review of Pokemon Sword and Shield on the Ogle channel. Now. One would think that being out of the series for literally almost 20 years, that I'd be totally lost. But honestly, putting in Pokemon Shield, I felt like it was right where I left off. All the mechanics are all basically the same. You pick a starter Pokemon to train, you put it through battle, you collect more as you go, you form a team, you take these teams to gyms, you prove that you're the best trainer in the land, and it was basically the same as it was all the way back in Generation 1. This was refreshing and nostalgic for someone finally coming back to the series to see that it held to its roots. Now, even the graphics felt at home for me. When I put this game in, I felt like the graphics of this game were the perfect update of the world I always wanted to play as a kid. The setting was perfect with Pokemon naturally populating the countryside and trainers littered throughout as well. I even I even liked the variety of the environment. Yes, there's been a lot of talk about the graphics in general not being up to par by reviewers, and there's been a lot of talk about this tree right here, but honestly, I felt that the graphics were great for a non-realistic, just a cartoon game. And it, it was just very charming when it came to that. But let's dive into the mechanics of the game a little bit more. Like I stated earlier, this game plays just like a Pokemon game played over 20 years ago, which means that they have a great formula down. Yes, little things have been updated like team battles and new items to use and new Pokemon to catch and Dynamaxing, but the core gameplay is the same and it's always been. And this gameplay is just simply fun. I didn't do any of the spoilers leading up to the game, so seeing my Pokemon evolve into a brand new creature for the first time, it was just like it was back in Generation 1 for me. Or seeing what Pokemon would pop up out in the grass or come out into the gym battles, it was just as thrilling as it ever was. However, despite this playing like I remember the old games playing, something was amiss here. Now, let's start off from this just to get go. You get to choose from one of these three adorable Pokemon. Now, I picked Sobble because, well, to me he was the most adorable, but I've always been partial to the water Pokemon. Then, my rival picks, and he chooses the Fire Starter. He literally just chose a Pokemon that is weak to what I started with, and he's pretty much guaranteed to lose. In the original game, your rival picked the one who was strong to your type, 
making it really hard for you to win and for you have to work really hard throughout the game just to beat your rival. But Shield just says, nah, we want to make sure that you win. Which leads me to my first and most major complaint about the game. This game is far too easy. I beat the whole game in under 20 hours, only lost one battle in the entire game, and never once had to grind my Pokemon to get them any stronger. Almost every battle I played, I one-shotted the Pokemon, like I was a Poke God. There was never a sense of accomplishment. In the old games, you had to truly train a team to work your way through the game. But here, you just pick a starter, and you're just going to dominate the whole game by themselves. But speaking of making the game too easy, you are constantly healed before major battles in case you are too weak. You are sometimes asked if you want to battle instead of being sucked in, and you don't have to travel to different cities because the plotline will just naturally move you there for you. And also, you have literally no way not to catch the legendaries. Of all my complaints on the easiness of the game, this is probably my number one part. The first legendary you come across, Eternatus, if I'm saying it right, because my pronunciations are always so horrible. And he does look awesome, by the way. Let's just pause for a second and look at this. This Pokemon looks amazing. But he cannot be defeated. You are literally required to catch him. This means everyone who plays this game is going to have the same overpowered fighter on their team. Then, when you reach the legendary sword and shield dogs, you are given the master ball right before to ensure you will catch them 100% guarantee. Which now means everyone who plays the game is going to have Eternatus and either the sword or shield dog on their team, two of the most powerful Pokemon possible. In the old games, it was a status thing to show that you were able to catch all the legendaries because they were long, hard battles that truly required skill to catch the Pokemon. If you had all the legendaries in Generation 1, it was because you were an actual skilled trainer. This was even more so in Generation 2 because those legendary dogs, oh my, my lord, they were nearly impossible to catch. They were constantly just jumping from one area to another area and their health bars were weak. But I'm getting at here is having a legendary truly meant something back then. In this game, it literally forces you to catch them. The difficulty of the game actually hinders the game beyond just annoyances like this though. The ease of the game makes the game boring for at least half of the experience. The next complaint are about the human characters. The human characters in this game are also a problem. First off, there are so many core characters to follow that none of them are actually well developed. But let's talk about your rival first. Your rival is supposed to be someone with these snarky remarks and plays that brag game to the max. I will always remember Gary saying to me, smell you later. Yeah, it was corny, I get that, but it was what made him so great. He had this superiority complex because it made you want to beat him all the more and give you an even greater sense of accomplishment when you finally did. In this game, your rival is always just simply encouraging you, smiling at you, and bragging what a great trainer you are. Oh my lord, good lord, just vomit time. This is a complete misunderstanding of what a rival is. The other characters in the game, they come off just as annoying because even with these other enemies they have replaced the Team Rocket with, they just end up joining you and by the end everyone is your friend in this game. It's just so disappointing that there's no true bad guys or anyone to truly defeat in the game. And the storyline involving all of these characters focuses around discovering why Pokemon are Dynamaxing, you have this mysterious history of two rulers and dogs who save the land, and of course your conquest to become a Pokemon Master. And while I don't like the characters in the game very much, I didn't dislike any of the storylines in and of themselves, because they are interesting as a concept, but the game crams these storylines down your throat with literally hundreds of unskippable cutscenes to read through. I looked it up for this and nearly four hours of an 18 hour game 
are cut scenes where you have to read through the material. And if you're a slow reader, that just extends. Four hours is like the minimum. This is nearly, if not more than a quarter of the game that you are reading as you play. This is just too much and it takes you out of the gameplay to be into a cutscene constantly. I found myself by the end of the game just simply pressing the A button constantly to skip through as much text as possible. Now, what kind of Pokemon review would this be though if we didn't talk about the Pokemon themselves? Now, I am split on this. Some new Pokemon I loved, like Sobble. What a great looking Pokemon. But then he evolves into this. What a not great looking Pokemon. Then there's Toxel. Great design, so much attitude, such an adorable little Pokemon. But then he becomes this. Now, that's just, I hate the evolutions in this game. Now, some people complain about the whole Pokedex not being there, and that's not as big of a deal to me, but I do wish that all the new Pokemon could have had some awesome designs since they chose to cut so many of the old ones out. I would have loved to have seen the first 150 Pokemon in there, or 151 Pokemon for my sake, but I get it, there's so many, but let's make sure the ones we include are great designed and great looking Pokemon. But like I said, I do like some of the new ones, quite a bit actually. So I'm sort of split on this topic, you know, between liking and disliking. Now the next two features that were bragged so much about this game was the idea of Dynamaxing and this wilderness area. The Dynamaxing is completely useless in the game, honestly. In a gym battle, you can Dynamax become a super powerful Pokemon and so can the gym leader. The gym leader always saves the power to the end, so naturally, since you know that, you also save the power to the end. Then you both Dynamax your Pokemon, which means you are now of equal power, still just simply larger. It's like in Power Rangers when the monster grows super tall so the Power Rangers have to get their zords out, but the same exact battle still takes place and it just seems like a huge gimmick. And it's the exact same way this is in this game. Dynamaxing is useless and it doesn't change the strategy of the game at all, and it just feels like a gimmick. The wilderness area allows for a free roaming Pokemon hunting adventure, and you can find some cool Pokemon this way. But with the game being so easy, you almost wonder why you would even bother trying to catch the new Pokemon to build better teams, because your starter Pokemon can win the game pretty much single-handedly. Now, for training to battle online or training against some friends, I can see using this area to boost a team or train, but if you are just simply playing the game as a single player, the wilderness area, it really doesn't hold much need for you. So I guess I like the idea of the wilderness area and I can see the point, but if you're just playing a game for yourself or single player, the wilderness area is pretty pointless. Now, with all of these complaints, it might be coming off that I just simply hate this game, which is absolutely not true. When I was playing the game, especially for the first half, I was actually having a lot of fun with it. Yes, the cutscenes were a bit much, and the stories and the characters were a little on the drab side, but training and catching Pokemon, it had me reliving my childhood in a beautiful, charming 3D world. Working to level my Pokemon up and getting them to evolve and seeing what they're going to evolve into, it was just as much fun as it ever was all the way back to Generation 1. The charm of the world and the Pokedon, Pokemon not Pokedons, themselves are still there 100%. If the game could have just simply upped the difficulty just slightly, then boredom would have never set in either. Also, if the game was just a bit more difficult and engaging, then all the little annoyances that I had probably wouldn't have even been noticeable. If you are brand new to the series and this game is not really a bad place to start because it allows you to get your feet wet, understand the basics of Pokemon, and experience a lot of the same charm that any other game has. But if you've played any of this series before though, you're going to notice the same missteps along the way that I did. But I honestly think despite the missteps, you're still going to have fun playing the game. So when it comes down to it, what am I going to rate Pokemon Sword and Shield? What's the number we're going to put on it? And I'm actually going to have two separate numbers for it. If you're a returning Pokemon player all the way from Generation 1 or any of the generations, you're going to know some flaws in the game and you're going to get a little bit on the board side of the easiness, but it's still not a bad game to play. And so for a returning Pokemon player, I'm going to give the game a 6 out of 10. But for a Pokemon player who's this is the first time that you've ever played a Pokemon game, you don't know hardly anything about the world, 
It's a great way to get your feet wet into the series about being overwhelmed and not facing a, a huge amount of, you know, obstacle of difficulty along the way. So for a new Pokemon player, I'd say you can get a 7 out of 10 for that. So I guess if you're going to average those together to give it a true Ogles rating, 6.5 out of 10. Now, as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And by all means, go out there and find you a great game to play. Just simply have a great rest of the day.